Hello everybody, Mnistorm here. Welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV Online. Shadowbringers, in the last episode we were presented with a mostly complete, yet still non-functional Talos that the, um, the people here have been trying to work on and get restored so that they can get the trolley back operational. So, uh, that presents our best opportunity to get the trolley operational so that we can get through to Nabath Arang to complete our objective here. And, but they couldn't figure out why it wasn't working. Orionje analyzed it, and because he's familiar with similar, you know, constructs uh, from the source, he was able to ascertain that the um, issue was that there was some damage to what would amount to the ethereal, ethereal circuitry that operates the Talos. And so we needed to find some ethereally conductive rock to replace those damaged components. We located that. But even after those repairs, it still wasn't operational. So it appears that the heart, the or the core, which is the heart of the Talos, which is its, you know, primary driver, is damaged. Unfortunately, the material, the very specific material required to craft a new one, is largely depleted. The mines in the area were basically mined out to build out the, the Talos that were used to operate the mines themselves. So there really isn't much left to be had, or any at all. Uh, turns out that Magnus had suspected that this was the issue with the Talos, and his wife, well, his now late wife, uh, had attempted to locate a suitable replacement. But in her efforts to uh, locate that in the mines, um, the mine collapsed, trapped her, and it was months before rescuers were able to reach where she was, and at that point she had deceased. So poor Magnus has not only lost both his son, oh, not only lost his son to the Sin Eaters, he lost his wife to a mine collapse. So he's he's had it pretty rough, and he's crawled into a bottle to try to deal with it, which doesn't usually help. It, it typically only makes matters worse. So, you know, he's not quite out of that yet. So we are over here at the mines, going to try our hand at finding a replacement, and Guth John over here has presented us with a potential solution. And that is, there are rock worms that dig into areas of the mine that are inaccessible, and they sometimes, you know, come back with stuff. So, we are going to try to see if we can find enough of this material, the leonine, that is needed to craft a suitable replacement for the core of the Talos. So that's what we're going to do. Alright, so... With that rundown out of the way, let's go ahead and head on into the mines and see if we can't uh, drive out these rockworms and see what we can find. So we need to place smoke bombs. Now, is that all I need to do? That appears to be all I need to do right now. And I'm going to ignore that gnome. Alright, so where might... That's probably in this chamber here.
You know, there's so many of these broken down Talos that you'd think if you were to just start dismantling them, we might be able to salvage a core that might still be operational. Or at least enough material from multiple cores to maybe make a new one. Unless that's not how that works. The air in the mines grows thick with smoke. Nearby, you hear the soft fumble rumbling of stones. All right. Yeah, they don't really hurt that much. It's more of an annoyance than anything. Although, I could bring my chocobo out. Inspect the rubble and acquire glittering rocks. 107. Okay. Two of seven. All right, what do we got? We got a, one over here. down. Alright, let's see what you've got. Yeah, just one. Is that all the ones in there? I think so. Alright, let's check this rubble.
And where's the last ones? Over there, okay. Expecting one more. Yep, there it is. Okay, and last one is up here somewhere. There it is. That's right. Got a little extra one. There we are. And so, excuse me, hopefully, this will have what we need. All right, here we go. There you are, find anything promising, perhaps. Between the two of you, I'd say you've got quite the hull. Best get comfortable, friends. It's going to take time for me to sift through all this. You may not remember this about Arminfilia, but prior to founding the Path of the Twelve, long before the Scions, she was something of a miner. After her father died, Flamine took her in and taught her the trade. I think they were both seeking to fill the void left by a loved one. Maybe that's why she took to it so readily. Back in those days, I spent most of my time in the quicksand, or some other tavern, loosening tongues and gathering secrets. Occasionally, I'd catch a glimpse of her in the street, on her way home after another hard day's work. I always felt a wave of relief when I saw she'd come back safe. Along with a pang of guilt at the fact I wasn't there to support her as I should have been. Simply speaking with her more than once in a blue moon would have been a good start. But I could never bring myself to do it. Instead, I threw myself into my work, and became every drunkard's best friend. Mm, can't imagine that he's, yeah, she thought too highly of you back then. Not too highly, no. She once called me a wine-sodden wharf rat, which wouldn't have been half as galling had it not been so accurate. But that was a lifetime ago. Here and now, I have another chance to do things right. And I will not squander it again. Hey! Well, come and see what I found! You're not going to believe this! Tell me it's Leonine. It is at that. You lot were born lucky. It's mostly broken pieces. But look at this. This is a rather fine specimen. 
It's been decades since we found anything approaching this big. But that's not all. There's an engraving on it. Ah, these scratches here. They're a little hard to make out. To my beloved Magnus and Schooley. Yes! Do you see? It was a gift to Magnus from his wife. She found it. She really found it. She must have spent her final hours carving this message into the stone, in the hope that he might see it one day. Those rock-backed bastards must have made off with it before we could clear a path to her. It's fate that brought you here to find this stone. No other explanation. It makes me wonder what else might still be buried in these parts. Well, that's fortuitous. Uh, do I want any of this dye? Not really. I'll take the silver pieces. All right. Well, at least we have what we need anyway. I wouldn't believe it had I not seen it for myself. Before you set it in the Talos, would you take it to Magnus? For three long years, he's believed she died for nothing. He must know the truth, that her sacrifice was not in vain. We'll take it straight to him, you have my word. Thank you, Guth John, for all your help. Right then. Let's not keep everyone waiting. I could teleport back. Actually, this is probably a better idea. Oh, there's a... The XP bonus fate. And another side quest. That is. Yep. The last side quest that gives an ether current the other last ether current well the last quest based ether current will come from whatever the last quest is that finishes up the zone for the main story all right let's give this to magnus and at least let's show it to him anyway see what he thinks what oh it's you if you come to complain about the trolley, you'll find no sympathy from me. I've told you before it won't run, and you wouldn't listen. Oh, but it will, now that we have this. Your name is engraved on it, along with your son's. It was a gift from your wife, Magnus, from Agna. No. No, she couldn't have. Agna. Take it. Do with it what you will. Are you certain? It would delay our plans, but... I said take it. It was you who found it, you who needs it. Looking at that stone, all I can see is... is... Please, just leave me be. I hope you'll be there when the Talos stirs to life. I'm sure she'd want you to see it. Now, would you do, would you do the honors of delivering this to Orianger? Ah. 
All right. He's still not quite over it yet, of course. All right. Well, let's see what Orianger can do with this. Thou art returned, and with Leonine it would seem. As promised, the Talos hath been made ready to receive its heart, thanks in no small part to Jarek, Thaf, and Menphilia. At last we shall return time to the Timeless, the Sentinel of Stone, that we may press on towards Nabath the Ring. Alright. There we go. Very good. Now let us begin. Preparations for the enchantment are complete. When the heart hath been suffused with a sufficient quantity of ether, the golem should be restored to life. All right then. Whenever you're ready. It's working! It's working! M Magnus! This? This wretched heap of stone and rubble? This worthless pile of earth? And yet... I can't... I can't... What trouble is thee, child? I shouldn't be here. I don't deserve to be. I don't deserve any of the things you've done for me. I'm just a burden. Helpless and hopeless. If tomorrow came and I was gone, it would be better for everyone. Thancred most of all. He'll never admit it, but I can see it in his eyes. I wish he'd just say it. Just say that he hates me. That he wishes I was dead so that she could return. None of this is thy doing, child. Twas I who set the Oracle on her path unto the first. I who condemned you all to suffer these torments. Tis my sin alone. ...and one that will haunt me unto my dying day. Yet I dare not dwell over long on my many regrets... ...for the world is a tapestry of fates... ...interwoven and inseparable. And we who strive to better it cannot choose but make difficult decisions. For naught of worth was ever achieved without sacrifice. 
And thus must man ever struggle to weigh life against loss. The one for whom thou mournest beareth no grudge. Were she here, she would not suffer thee to languish in sorrow. She would tell thee to seek thine own path, thine own purpose. It is a truth which I myself was slow to learn. Yet a truth it remaineth. Thou needst but have faith. Have faith, and all will be well. Uh, you probably should go to her. Not today. All right, meanwhile, in the Crystarium. To what do I owe the pleasure that is your extended stay? Oh, to the tediousness of our hero's present endeavors. That and the insufferable abundance of light in Armoreng. I should be glad to keep my distance. Oh, I'm rather fond of sleep, you know. It's a wonderful way to pass the time. Not that my compeers will agree, mind you. Always on the move, the lot of them. Like La Hebrea, constantly jumping from vessel to vessel. Such fire, such determination. So much passion, fleeting and forgotten. Come to think of it, Exarch, I don't believe I've ever seen you retire to your chambers for so much as 40 winks. However do you keep your eyes from closing? The cold shoulder. You wound me, sir. Always so guarded in our every interaction. Interactions you curiously refrain from sharing with the Scions and their champion. And risk souring your budding relationship? I think not. Much as I dislike you, there are more useful targets for her energies. And I am not in the habit of pointing her at my enemies like a weapon. Is that right? Fond of her, are you? You continue to fascinate me, Exarch. But tell me, who are you? The once great nation whose ingenuity gave birth to this tower was shaped by my hand. As such, I know full well the wonders it can facilitate and those it cannot. There is nothing in these walls which could have aided you in summoning our dear friend across time and space. Much less in possession of her mortal flesh, not even I could have performed such a feat. I see. You had a hand in Alak as well. You would know what I am? I am the adjudicator of the sacred history with which you dared trifle. I am keeper of this tower's boundless wisdom, 
the wisdom of ages without age, of everywhere and nowhere, the great work of those who tamed the wings of time and grasped the nature of the rift. Tis a boon born of sacrifices yet unmade, the parting gift of brave heroes who will one day give their lives for a brighter future. I will not see their hopes and dreams squandered. The history which led us here will be unwritten. I promise you that. Well, it seems we are both eager to fulfill our duties then. On that much, we are in agreement. Well, that's an interesting conversation with the Exarch and Emmet Selk. We'll see where that leads eventually. A little bit of a clue as to who the Exarch really is. All right, well, let's go ahead and talk to Oriange here. My apologies for the delay. Minfilia and I had a private matter to discuss. Which bringeth me to the question, how didst thou find Thancred during your search? He spoke of Minfilia, of his own accord. I see. Tis well that he did, and with such candor. I attempted to broach the subject before. My intention was to ensure no words remain unspoken between them lest tragedy intercede. I regret I myself know all too well. Alas, in the end he refused to heed my counsel. A time will come when they must face the reality of their circumstances, but I have faith that all will be well in time. Now, let us not tarry any longer. The Talos and Nabatharang await. Indeed they do, but probably not for today. Because, as we proceed, um, we're going to end up into a bit of a extended sequence, if I recall correctly. So, we're going to hold off on that until next episode. And then hopefully kind of finish up a lot of the story stuff, and then we're going to probably have a... Uh, a duty, duty to do to um, defeat the Light Warden once we find it. So, we will get to that. Oh, we'll start moving in that direction for next episode. So, for now, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Go ahead, like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you next time.